What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about a pretty popular topic. Wing foiling versus kite surfing. One, three, five, go! Uh, coming from the wild, wild west indies. Okay guys, so welcome back to another video. Today is a pretty interesting one because if you guys have been watching for a while, you know we do a lot of kite surfing here in Antigua. Kite surfing is kind of the big thing. But over the past few years, wing foiling has really taken off. And I think these days, if you're someone new, trying to get into a sport, want to spend time on the water, you now have an option. Are you going to invest time into kite surfing or are you going to invest time into wing foiling? And today we're going to kind of weigh out the options, maybe help guide you in a direction on why you might want to pick one or the other. So first thing we're going to touch on is the gear. If you don't know anything about winging or kite surfing, I'm going to kind of showcase the difference in the gear. So if you come over this way. So here's an example of a kind of general wing foil setup. We have a five foot one board. We have a 72 mast. We have a nice big front wing. This is the whole foil setup here. And then we have our actual wing back here, which is where you can actually hang on to and ride with. And this is kind of everything that you need to go winging. Most of the wing foiling activities and sessions are done on a foil. And then if you pop over to this side, you can kind of see our kite surfing setup. So right here, this is a standard twin tip kite board. This is what most kiters that you see out kiting are gonna be using, a board similar to this. And then next over we have a kite foil, which actually starts to really be compared to the wing foil because it's the same kind of foil setup, just a much smaller board. This board is only three foot 11 inches, so quite a difference in actual length and size. Then we got our kite, which looks really big compared to the wing, but packs down super duper small into a nice backpack. Uh, so yeah, the gear is quite different. Um, kiting, you have a little bit more stuff, but smaller. Winging, you have a little bit less things, but it's just slightly bigger. So next, we're going to talk about the cost of getting into each sport. So wing foiling uh, and kiting, the gear cost is pretty similar. Maybe you need a few less things for winging than you do kiting, but the actual cost of buying gear is similar. Where the cost changes as far as investment is on the lesson front. Winging, after two, three lessons, you have more than enough info to kind of figure it out, get out there, buy some gear, and practice on your own because it's a much safer sport to learn solo. Whereas kite surfing is going to take quite a few more lessons to get to the point where you can safely launch and land and actually go out and have a session on your own. So you're going to spend a lot more time and money on kite surfing to kind of crack the basics and get to where you can kind of do it solo. And next up, we're going to talk about the long-term progression because as we just touched on, Kite 7 takes a little bit more investment to kind of get to where you can do it solo. Winging takes a little bit less. So winging, it's fast to kind of learn, but then I think it's going to be pretty slow to progress past that point because it's very similar to windsurfing. You can get to the point where you can ride back and forth, do some jibes, do some tacks, but then to do any sort of jumps, any sort of actual tricks, you may never actually get to that. You may be able to ride in waves, have a lot of fun with that, but to actually push past that point, it's quite tricky with winging. It's hard to learn those type of tricks on a wing. Whereas kite surfing is the opposite. It takes a lot longer to get to where you can just ride up in, have a solo session, but then if I check in with you a year or two from now, you may be riding a surfboard, you may be kite foiling, you may be doing big air, dark slides, all sorts of cool tricks. So long term, I think kite surfing has a lot more variety than winging. Winging, what you see is what you get. That's kind of the setup. Maybe you progress past that point, kiting, you can start with this, you can get a surfboard, get a foil, do all sorts of stuff. So I think long term, kiting will kind of keep things fresh a bit longer than winging. All right, and the last thing we're going to touch on is like the accessibility of each sport. And this is where I think winging has kind of been really blowing up. Because kite surfing, you need a certain amount of wind, you need a nice big beach launch bomb, you kind of need someone to help you launch and land. Whereas winging, you can kind of launch from anywhere because you can paddle out to the wind line, you can set your stuff up and launch by yourself, land by yourself, so that the act of getting out and getting on the water is a lot simpler and less stressful with the wing. Um, but then as far as wind conditions and actual water time, the wing, you kind of still need a little bit of wind. You can push it in light wind, but it's gonna be a bit of a workout. Whereas if you get into kite foiling on a kite, Light wind, if, if there's enough wind just to get the kite up in the sky, is actually the perfect time to go and have an epic kite foiling session. So it's just, again, you got to kind of weigh out your options. Where do you live? Do you have places where people already kite? Do you have a big beach to launch from? If you don't, maybe winging's your thing. If you want to go out by yourself, launch off your boat, have a sick session, winging is super stress-free for that. So those are things you kind of got to decide on. Winging's definitely easy to get out, get riding. Kiting, it's 
slightly more complicated, but maybe allows you to ride in a slightly wider range of conditions. So for me personally, I've spent a lot of my life kite surfing, so I've kind of always enjoyed kiting. And winging has been actually super fun to learn something new. So the challenge of doing it is definitely there, even if you have a lot of experience on each one. And then from my personal experience, doing having the ability to like do whatever, kite on a twin tip, kite foil, wing. Winging has really been super fun when there's a little bit more wind. So kind of the days where I could go out on a twin tip, send some jumps, maybe do some freestyle and have a sick twin tip kite session. That's when I can also think about maybe going on the wing because it's going to be easy to get going, super fun if the water's super messy and choppy, stuff like that. Whereas kiting, if the wind's super duper light, I'm always going to go kite foiling because you can really push the limits in light wind. You can really go exploring with very little effort. So yeah guys, uh, that pretty much sums up today's video. Uh, before we kind of close it off, what are you excited about? Are you excited about wing foiling? Are you excited about kite surfing? Or are you excited about both, kind of like I am? And if you are excited about any of these things and you want to learn how to do it, uh, you can check out our kite school here in Antigua, uh, kelskiteboard.com. We teach wing foiling, wake foiling, kite surfing, kite foiling, kind of everything related to wind sports here in Antigua. So yeah, we'd love to kind of share the stoke with you guys and all that stuff will be linked down in the description below. If you're brand new, make sure you subscribe uh, so you don't miss out on any future videos. And we'll see you guys soon in another video. Peace, love, and big ups.